Hi everyone, welcome to the series Visual Effects for Games. This is the tutorial number 20 and this time we are going to see how to create some rain that includes clouds, mists and ripples and splashes for the rain. We can also see some lightning but the thunder deserves a tutorial of its own and that's only for the next video, otherwise this one would be too long. If you want you can support me on my Patreon page and get access to this and much more effects. I left the link in the description. So, let's see how we can do this. And this time we are going to start in Photoshop. You can also use GIMP to create this texture. And we can start by creating a new file, which is going to be for the clouds, with a resolution of 500 by 500. Let's paint the background to black, create a new layer with Ctrl Shift N, and change our color to white. Now we can select one of these brushes, one that you like, I found out that this one works well and then with a few brush clicks we can start creating our texture to look like a cloud. You can play with the opacity and with the size, something like this. We can also use the erase tool with the same brush and create some voids, some empty spaces. Once we have a texture similar to this one we can hide the black background and export the PNG to Unity. Now we can go to Unity, create a new material and this one I'm going to rename it to Cloud01, change the shader to Particles Additive or Particles Alpha Blended if you want to add some dark colors, drag our texture to the texture slot and let's create a new particle system. We can rename it to Clouds, the rotation is going to be zero in all the axes and one of the most important things is the shape and the shape for the clouds is a box. In my case I'm going to make the X and the Z with values of 100 and give it some thickness with the Y axis, like this. As you can see the particles are moving too much so let's decrease the start speed to around minus 0.2 and 0.5. For the start lifetime we can set it to some bigger values like 10 and 15. Let me just push this up, like this. And let's drag and drop our clouds material. And now the start size, it's going to be really big, something between 15 and 25. At least for my scene, this really depends on the size you have in your scene. You can also make sure that every time a particle spawn, it has a different start rotation. You can make sure it's between 0 and 360 degrees. And let's turn on randomized rotation. Now as you can see, we have to decrease the alpha of the start color and we can make it random between two colors and decrease the alpha to really small values like this. Alright, now we only need to fade in and fade out each particle and we can do that with the color over lifetime. The keys on top control the alpha and the keys at the bottom controls the colors. I'm gonna use this gradient. And we can also use some velocity over lifetime to create some randomness in the motion of our cloud and set the space to world. Of course you can make the clouds move faster if you want, that's really up to you. Let's also use some size over lifetime, make sure it starts with a smaller size, it grows a little bit and then it dies with the original size. And to give it a little bit more of natural randomness we are going to use a little bit of rotation over lifetime with some really small values. Something between minus 10 and 15, that should be enough, even less. Now again, it really depends on the size of your scene, but in my case I'm going to increase the rate over time to around 25. Alright, so now we are done with the clouds, let's create the rain. We can create a new particle system, rename it to rain. Let's just make sure that the rotation is 90 in the X, like this. and. And this one is going to use the default particles, we don't need to create any texture. And now let's go down here to the renderer and change the render mode to stretch at billboard. And we are going to increase the speed scale to around 0.15 or maybe more, it's up to you. Now let's make sure that the shape is also a box. And this time we are going to set 100 in the X and 100 in the Y, like this. We can also give it some thickness in the Z around 4, should be enough. And we can also make sure that the emission is going to be around 200. This is where you control if it's raining too much or just a little bit. 
And the start lifetime is where you control how long your rain is going to live. So basically, if you set your particle system too high, you will have to increase the start lifetime so the rain can touch the ground. And the start speed is the speed of the rain, in this case, and between 15 and 25, I think is I think it's good. You can increase it more, all right. We have some weird rain. <laughs> and now we only need to make sure that the rain is really thin, it's really thin. So let's decrease the start size to be random between 0.05 and 0.15. This looks more like rain. And we can make some rain longer or smaller by turning on 3D start size and in the Y and in the Z you can set values between 1.2 and 0 0.2. This will make sure that some rain is small, the other is longer, just to create some more randomness. And now for the color, as you can see the rain is too visible. Let's decrease the alpha of the start color. You can create two colors for that. One has more visibility than the other, it's up to you also. Now let's fade in and fade out the rain. We don't really need this, but if we look up, we will see that the rain starts with full opacity and we don't want that, we want to fade in. So let's turn on color over lifetime and make sure that the beginning and the ending has the alpha decrease it. Now we are going to use the collision and we can set the type to world. We can see the rain bouncing and we have to set the bounce to zero and the dampen to one. If we set the dampen to one, we will make sure that the rain when it hits the ground, it doesn't move to the sides. You can also visualize the bounds of this collision by turning on visualize bounds, as you can see. And the next thing we need to turn on is the sub emitters. The sub emitters will make sure that either we create some particles in the birth of each particle, or in this case, we want to create some particles in the collision. So basically every time some rain hits the ground, it will spawn a ripple or a splash or both at the same time. And for that we need to create another particle system. This one is going to be for the ripples. It's going to have a really small duration and I'm going to turn on looping just to see how this works. But after it's done, we want to turn off the looping. And the start speed is also going to be zero. This doesn't move. And we don't want any shape. We can turn that off. The rate over time of the emission is zero because we are going to use a burst. And we only want one burst we are basically only going to emit one particle. Now let's decrease the start lifetime to some really small values between 0 0.3 and 0 0.5, maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less. And for this one, we are going to need to go to Photoshop or to GIMP to create a texture. So let's create a new file and call it Ripple with a size of around 215 by 215. Let's create a new layer with Control Shift N Let's paint the background to black, just so we can see what we are doing. We want to select a brush with B and select this brush, the first brush right here. And as you can see, I painted in the background. This is a mistake that I've done. You have to paint in the layer. And we want to paint a big circle like this one with a opacity of around 20 or 30. And then we want to paint a really small circle in the center like this and another one in the center also. Once we have this done, we want to create a shape, a circle shape, an elliptical shape. We can select this tool right here. And you can hold shift and alt to create a proportional circle. We also want to set the fill to empty, to nothing, and the stroke to white. The fill of the layer is also going to be around 20, maybe less, maybe more. And we can double click in the ellipse to access the layer style so we can turn on the outer glow. Once we are in the outer glow, we want to set it to white and increase the size. And we can also decrease the opacity. And you have to adjust the fill of this layer, of the ellipse. And then we can duplicate the ellipse and we Ctrl T make it smaller, just like this. And this is pretty much done. Once we have something like this, we can hide the black background and export as a PNG to Unity. Back to Unity, we want to create another material, change the shader to Particles Additive, and drag and drop the texture we have just created. And now we can drag the material to the ripples. 
In the ripples, let's change the render horizontal billboard. Let's also fade in and fade out the ripple with color of a lifetime. And in this case, the start size is going to be random between 1 and 1.6. Let's also decrease the alpha of the start color. And we can turn on size over lifetime to create a curve similar to this one, which will make it smaller at the beginning, it will grow a little bit and then it will shrink. Once we have all this set up, we can go back to the rain and in the sub emitters, now we can drag and drop our ripples, just like this. And Unity is telling us that it needs to reparent our particle system to the rain. And we can say yes. And once we do this, if you look closely now, each time the rain hits the ground, it's going to spawn a ripple. Which is quite cool, in my opinion. Okay, so now we need another sub emitter, which is the splashes. So let's go ahead and create a new particle system, rename it to splashes. Let's set the start lifetime to be random between 0 0.6 and 1 and the duration is also going to be 1. And by the way, don't forget to turn off looping of the ripples. Back to the splashes, we want to set the start speed to 0 and the start size to 0 0.01 and 0 0.08. And we don't need to create any other texture, the default particles should be fine. In the emission, let's set the rate over time to 0. We want to use a burst that's going to be random between 1 and 4. Alright, now for the shape, we want to use a circle. A very small circle, as you can see. And now we want to use the velocity over lifetime to make sure that the splashes goes up and a little bit to the sides. Don't forget to set the space to world and in the Y we can set random values between 2 and 5. As you can see it goes up and let's just make sure that in the X and in Z we have values between 1 and minus 1. Now, if we want these to go up and down, we can use the gravity modifier and the value of 0 0.6 should be enough. And now as you can see we have some cool splashes. Let's just make sure that we fade in and fade out with the color over lifetime. And if you want, you can use some size over lifetime as well, similar to what we have been using. Let's also decrease the alpha of the start color. Just like this, and now we can go back to the rain and drag and drop our slashes. We can say yes again, we want to reparent our splashes to the rain. And now as you can see the splash is maybe a little bit bigger or maybe you have to decrease the opacity. It's really up to you and to your taste. And the last thing is the mist. For the mist we can duplicate the clouds, rename it to mist. Let's push it down, just like this. And let's decrease the start size. and the rate over time as well. And by the way, you can also create another texture if you want to spice this up. In the package that you can find in Patreon, I've done that. I have also some water puddles in the package. And that's pretty much it for the mist, the clouds and the brain. In the next tutorial, we are going to see how to create this lightning, which I think is really great and really looking good. So this is it guys, I hope you have enjoyed, subscribe for weekly game development tutorials. If you want you can find more tutorials about special effects in my channel or in the description. If you are able to, I will appreciate a lot if you can support me on my Patreon page. I wanna say a big thank you to all the patrons and I hope to see you in the next video.